right, guys. Hey, this is Anthony Bandiero here, attorney and senior legal instructor and uh, with Blue to Gold Law Enforcement Training, bringing another uh, search and seizure show. We actually have a, a, a interesting format for uh, for those who normally watch the show. Either I'm solo, but usually I have a guest attorney. Um, but just the way it worked out, all my instructors are either traveling or they are um, busy with family stuff. So I invited a friend of you know, friend, an acquaintance for sure, uh, Manny. Manny, introduce yourself real quick. Just uh, who you are and so forth. Yeah, my name is uh, Emmanuel Nazario. Everyone calls me Manny. I work for the Hartford County Sheriff's Office. I'm also in the U.S. military 11 years. I've been in law enforcement for six and a half years. I worked for a county agency in Maryland for four years, and then I lateraled over to the um, the Sheriff's Hartford. Office in Hartford County. Yep. Now, I is it true? I think it's this true because I've taught in Hartford before. I believe Hartford has – the most affluent part of what's what's that what's that what's that no, your statistic? There's like some of the richest people in the nation are in Hartford County. Is that true? Something like that? Uh, is that uh, not, is that, is, not that's not, not that it. Aware of. Okay, you, you would know. <laughs> okay, well you just you know you're you're just a cop, you know, blue collar. Just get back to work. You know, you protect rich people's stuff out there. I, I could have swore there was like a really big. Oh, that's Montgomery think, County. Yeah, oh, yeah. Teresa, yeah. Or Howard, okay. maybe, but it's, that's how I know. Oh, actually, it was Howard. It was Howard. Uh, I, I was teaching in Howard, and they just had these, like, mega, mega mansions out there, you know. So uh, here's the deal. So what I want to do here is um, is this – I want you know, I know you usually have some questions, but let's answer some other people's questions. And let me know – you know, you're – I'm the lawyer. You're the cop, okay? And together, we can get the job done. You would agree with that? Uh, sure. I'll, I'll do my All best. Right. All right, let's do this. So let's let me answer. I'm, and, you know, you answer the way you think the law is, you know, you, 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 you. Oh, let me just say one other thing, too, on behalf of your agency. You know, obviously, you're here on your own. You don't represent your agency. So any answer you give is not re representative of your agency. I know that sometimes they may want to hear that. You know, you just, um, you know, just kind of joining a, a show right now. Look, he, he took off to go call his boss. OK, so Manny, um, the first one we're going to do is Christian. Christian, um, I'm going to. Get your mic on. Remember, Christian, don't worry about your camera. Only you can see panelists, which is me and Manny. So, Christian, one second here. Uh, okay. All right, Christian, you, you should be uh, seeing a little thing on your screen. Can you guys hear me? Loud and clear. What you got, my friend? All right. So, I just want more of a, an opinion. Um, so, basically... It was a couple weeks ago, maybe not, if not a month ago. But anyways, responded to a domestic violence. Um, long story short, I ended up arresting a boyfriend for assault, domestic violence. Um, and usually, I'm, I'm in Texas, by the way. But usually okay. here in the in the, in Texas, we it's it's usually a procedure standard to request a an emergency protective order against the um, protected person. Mm -hmm. So part of the uh, protection order. It says that you cannot possess a handgun or any firearms while that protection order is in place. So basically my question is, is the suspect has a roommate who possesses a firearm. Um, upon interviewing the roommate, I mean, I, I go deep into questions. Can he access your firearm? Yes. Does he have access to your room? Your room? Yes. Um, does he have access to, you know, you know, basically obtaining the firearm. <clears throat> yes, the per yes, the suspect, the firearm doesn't is not registered to the suspect, it's registered to the roommate. But because, in my opinion, the suspect had equal access or ability to obtain that firearm, I seized that firearm from the roommate. And I just kind of wonder if do you do you in your opinion, do you think that was justified or not? Mm -hmm. Manny, uh, this might not be your uh, your your forte. Even you, you want to get. I mean, I can I can answer the question. This might this is probably not your sandbox. This is more of a legal question. Um, I right. think the answer is no. I think the answer is, is no, Christian. I don't think you have the authority to take a, a person uninvolved their firearm. Now, at the end of the day, you know, when you say access, I mean, I guess I guess they have. Uh, yeah, uh, Manny, try to keep your camera still. Okay, can oh, you like lay on. it down? Yeah, yeah that's what I'm gonna do right now. You better have some pants on too. Don't be getting weird. No. Right <laughs> I'm, I'm joking. Look, no, I'm joking. I'm joking. So look, the the the, the point is is that um, 
just because the guy can some have some theoretical access, you know, not theoretical, but maybe some some real access at a firearm because they do live in a confined space. I just don't see how that order gave you judicial authority to take an unbought person's personal property. Um, at the end of the day, I think what had to happen there is you can ask for consent to go with the firearm, which the guy's probably not going to say that. Or you're going to have to go back to the judge and ask for permission to seize this, this roommate's firearm, which I sincerely doubt they are going to give you. Um, you, you know, I just don't see how the judge even has remotely the authority to give you the, to tell you that you can go seize this roommate's gun when he's done nothing wrong except live with a person who has a TP, uh, a protective order. I think the most that they can do if they have a concern about it is they can tell the the uh, the adverse party that they're going to have to find another place to live. I, I I just don't think you have the authority for that. But I will also tell you that this is not my um, this is not my you know forte. I do not have any books on this. This is not what I practice. If there's somebody else in the count comments that has you know a, a different opinion on this, but I'm I'm pretty sure that this was was not permissible with the judge's order. That's my opinion. Feedback? Gotcha. Yeah. Um, yeah. One more, hey, look. one more for you. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. And I want to tell you, look, I, your, your heart's in the right place. You're just trying to protect people. You know what I'm saying? But I wouldn't, I, I just think looking at it, I just don't see how we can do that. But go on. Gotcha. And this was actually from a fellow officer. So um, he conducted a traffic stop, which led to, um, I can't, I believe he located a firearm. So basically he conducted the traffic stop. Uh, he ended up finding out that the driver of the of the vehicle was an illegal alien, didn't have any documentation, didn't have anything. I mean, it, I think it was, again, based off of his investigation, he determined this person an illegal alien. Um, yep. And I believe um, he ended up towing the vehicle for no insurance and upon conducting, conducting an inventory search of the vehicle, he located the firearm. So at the time, the officer could not recall the actual statutes that prohibits an illegal alien from possessing the handgun. So he sees the handgun in that moment. Um, do you think it was justified in that moment, even though, you know, um, he wasn't at the, at the moment, he, he did not know the statutes that prohibited this? Well, let me ask you this. I mean, we know that there's a federal law that says you can't do it, but you guys are not deputized, right? You're not you're not federal officers. Um, but let me ask you this. Um, did you ultimately find that there was a statute on the books that prohibited this? So basically, I, I believe from the Texas statute, it just says, any any person prohibited by other law and i yes. guess the officer is using that in his favor because he's kind of interpreting that and well he's using federal law as mm -hmm. that interpretation of any other law um yeah so yeah look i i that's what i that's how i look at it okay i think that no first of all the rule is that even if the officer at the time of the seizure was not sure like you know what the law was but he's like look i know this is a I know this violates the law, right? I just can't put my finger on it. Um, that's not the standard. The standard is, was the officer correct, right? And the officer, I believe, was correct. I believe that that, that state law, when it says, you know, you're, you're violating, basically, if you, I think the way to interpret it almost to me is like, if you're violating federal law, that's one way. If you're violating state or federal law, then that's a violation of state law. You know, does that make sense, right? If you can't possess that gun under federal law, you violate state law. And... It's almost like reference by incorporation, right? Incorporation by reference. I, 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 I would, I would, I think we're okay there. But you know, ultimately, I guess the 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 DA is going to have to be the one to decide whether or not the press charges, right? Um, but I'm sure. Anyway, so I, I, I think the answer you're you're, ha you're asking very good questions, but I think that was the right thing there. Uh, you know, even though you clearly violating federal law, but I think that's the right thing there. I think that is a violation of of Texas code. Gotcha. That's all that's, I got for you know, today. Okay, man, good stuff. All right. Um, anything to add, Manny? Those are kind of those were kind of a little tougher questions than I'm. Uh, you know, those are very state specific kind of stuff, and maybe, but yeah, that was okay. Uh, those are pretty. Those are pretty tough. I was going to say only the first, the first one with the roommate. Yeah. The only thing I can think of is there, the TPO is not on the roommate, so you'll be violating his Second Amendment right because that's his weapon. And like, correct me if I'm wrong. Like the his room is kind of like his. Castle his privacy, yeah, his castle exactly. Mm -hmm. So, like, even though the other guy has can have access to his room, possibly, but it's that guy's like reasonable expectation of privacy, like his room, like his authority yeah. there, uh, kind of, you know. That's yeah. what I was now, in my head. Yeah, and also, uh, you know, somebody's talking about if, if it was if the the gun was in the common area, then like in in the in the living room, I would take it. 
I'll be very careful with that too. It's not that it's that it, it's you know we can't just be taking property just because um, the, the the guy could access it, right? It's it's that he has some level of control over it. Like it's actually like he has dominion and control over the firearm, right? So if I'm if I'm a roommate and you know and, and I'm um okay, Jack is like, if I'm a roommate and I and I have my AR-15 out, right? And I I like to snuggle with my AR-15, Manny. Just so you know, um, you know, I'm not in Maryland with your very goofy, you know, heavy barrel laws for AR-15s. I, I like I got a light pencil barrel for my AR-15, and I'm you know, and I'm, I'm kind of being a little serious. Here. Like I have like I'll watch TV with my AR-15. Okay, so let's imagine that I have a roommate, and he comes home, and the police are like falling into the house, you know. And he's like, hey, Anthony, oh, shit, this sucks. I got bad news for her. I got this. Uh, remember that girl I was dating? She got, a, she got a protective order against me, you know? And it says I can't, you know, have guns and so forth. And the cop sees my gun right on the coffee room table. And he comes over and takes my gun. We have a huge problem, right? Because he's violating my rights. I didn't do anything wrong. It's my gun. It's not his gun. And if the officer said, hey, look, just so you know, this guy cannot be around fire or cannot have access to firearms, I will tell that cop, absolutely he will not have common authority over my firearms. I will not give him access to my firearms. However, I'll do what I want with my firearms, including cuddle with them while I'm watching a little born identity, right? So, and I can do that. And the cop can't do anything about it. He can't tell me, Anthony, you have to put your guns away. You can't have your guns out when your roommate's here. I would say, yes, I can. I can have all the guns I want. He just can't touch my guns. And so I just want to make sure we're clear on that. It's not that the guy can go over to my room or go over to my AR-15 and grab my gun. And now somehow the cops can take my property. It's that he has common authority and that's more nuanced and that takes another um, analysis. I hope that makes sense, right? You, you know, people don't lose their second amendment just because they have the misfortune to live with a, a guy who gets jammed up on a protective order. And Shane does say cuddling a firearm is a second amendment right. Absolutely it is. Uh, absolutely. You, you have no idea. You have no idea how much I cuddle my firearms. So Jake is on deck. Oh, Jack. Is it, is it Jake or Jack? I guess it's Jack. Sorry. Jack. Hey, Jack. My bad. Hey, hey Anthony. How are you? Hey, hey but good, buddy. What's up, Manny? What's up, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> so I got to give you a little little rundown. I'm in, I'm in Maryland. I'm, I'm Manny's co-worker, no. as you know, at this point. Um, oh, oh actually, I, I, I did forget that. I did forget that. But go ahead. That's great. Uh, so we, we go to a, a domestic situation. Husband commits a felony assault on his wife. In the midst of that, the wife's boyfriend shows up and commits a felony assault on the husband. Um, it's like Jerry so Springer going on around here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it, it was awesome. It was very comical. Um, yeah. So we get there. The boyfriend has fled the scene already. Um, the husband is still there. So long story short, we place him under arrest, right? He refuses medical treatment. Medics come to the scene because... He's got a, a large laceration on his cheek that needs stitches. The medics are like, he's probably got a concussion, possible broken orbital. Like, I mean, he 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 got tuned up pretty well. Um, he refuses medical treatment. Can I, because he's in my care and custody, can I force him to the hospital prior to yes. jail? Absolutely. Absolutely. Without a doubt. What you can't force, right? You can't force him to accept medical care, right? And but you are responsible for him. So you know if you think that he could have some internal injuries and he's just not making the right decision for his own care, that, that doesn't that doesn't mean you just you um, you know you can't like civilly commit him or something like that. You know, but, but you can't you can't make his decisions for him. But what you can say is, look. I'm not smart enough medically to make the know whether or not this is some kind of internal bleeding. Does he have signs of a concussion? I'm just not smart enough. To, I don't know that. So I'm going to bring it to a doctor and let them clear him. In fact, it happens all the time. In fact, it happens every single day in this country where people will get into a, a car accident, for example, and they get arrested for DUI. The cop, you know, just kind of brings him to the jail and the jail says, we're not taking him unless he's been cleared, right, by a doctor. And the guy's like, uh, but I don't want to go to the doctor. I don't have any insurance. I, I can't afford it. What they send me a bill. And it's just, that's a problem for another day, right? At the end of the day, he's in your custody. You can clear, you can have a doctor clear him. And then the doctor will make that decision about whether or not the guy is fit for, um, for, uh, for custody. 
Okay. That, I mean, that's that's what I was tracking on scene. Um, yep. But our for some reason, our EMTs or paramedics refused to transport for us. And they were like, well, he doesn't want medical treatment. He's conscious and alert. He can refuse if we take him. It's kidnapping. So I'm getting into an argument with the with the medic. Like, no, it's not. He's in my custody. We're going to have somebody in the back of the medic. He's handcuffed yeah. to your yeah. gurney. If you don't want to, I'm going to commandeer your ambulance and we'll handle it that way. <laughs> God, you, uh, please don't do that. <laughs> please don't do that. Yeah, you know you're you know you're going to be on uh, like. Fox News, CNN, you're going to be on all of them if you do that shit. Because I, how many times have we seen the cop arrest the paramedic for not doing what they want? You know, I got to tell you, like, um, God, that's that would be so damn funny. You, you know, I see you driving. They call it the bus, you know, in the back east, you know, the, the New York. You're just driving the bus with the guy, you and Manny. Manny's in the back holding <laughs> this guy down in the gurney. I just think, look, it, but here, Jack, I, I want to make one thing clear, though. To me, it just made me think, you like, I'm, look, how many times have we been on scene where the EMS is like they sign off on the, they sign off on the guy. Well, actually, this is against medical advice, right? Is he AMA? In other words, is the paramedic saying he's fine, or are they saying, "Look, we don't. He doesn't want any treatment." So, are they, are they doing AMA? Are they saying that the guy probably should go to the hospital, but he doesn't want to? Is there that situation? Yeah, they're they're telling us he should probably be checked out, but good because okay. he's good. conscious and alert. He has yes, the he right. Has to refuse service from them so they will not do a transport for us look there's some truth to that there's some truth to that right there you no know, the guy can ama right he can ama the problem i have with this the right jack the problem i have with this is that you are kind of stuck in the middle of this because the paramedics are not the level of care that should be deciding that this guy needs to be admitted against his you know he's he doesn't they call it capacity right does you know does he have mm -hmm. the capacity to refuse medical right and, you know, when we have, you know, the EMS and, and look, Brian is freaking on here, right? Brian, Brian, do you want to, Brian, do you want to jump on this and give your two cents about this, about what you would do? Or do you, because I'm thinking at the, the, the least, Jack, look, I don't know if we can force these, these EMS guys to do anything. I'm thinking that we just have to transport them ourselves. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking we're yeah, going to go to the hospital. Yeah. I was going to take the ambulance. It's a, it's a county owned vehicle. I work for Oh my county. God. P please, Jack, p please, <laughs> actually, p please do it. Please do it, and let's do it, and then let's do a podcast on that and show the whole world the video because you know you're gonna get a million views on that shit, man. You and Manny are going down in history as the guy, <laughs> the cops who commandeered the ambulance, and you're like, you got Manny back there doing the paddles, you know, <laughs> putting needles in this guy's arm to get him the tranquilizer or something. <laughs> no, <laughs> just just drive yourself. If you feel like there's something more going on, just drive yourself, I guess, or call a different ambulance. Right All right. That. Yeah, no, that's a good one. God, it's awesome. What goes down in Maryland? You know what I mean? Maryland's a crazy place. <laughs> Maryland is a crazy place. Okay. Um, let's talk about this. Um, Ryan, can you come on? Can, Ryan, can you come on real quick, please, and ask your question so we can understand it? What's going on there? All right. Ryan. Ryan. There we go. All right. So tell me your this. Tell me what the, what the question was, and give me some context here. Well, I was kind of piggybacking off the uh, last question with uh, seizing the, the gun the and the roommate. Um, roommates would have. Uh, my understanding would be more like a if I had shared if I shared a house with somebody, they would have their own bedroom. I couldn't. I don't have common authority over that bedroom. Now, if I'm married to my wife, mm -hmm. we would have common authority over the entire house. Yep. So if I have a no usually, order, usually, I would, yep. if I have a no contact order with somebody, if I have a no contact order, period, and it's not with my wife, and then my wife is an avid gun collector, let's say, are those guns able to be seized? Since I live at that house, I have common authority over the guns. Um, would that be a reasonable seizure of those guns at that point? Now, look, I, I know, look, I, just, I, just want, I don't want to make assumptions that it's always this way, but you know, it's possible, right, Ryan, that that married couples do have their own separate property that that they don't have common authority over. But it is rare. We we agree with that, right? So just I have met some cops in my career that have said, "Look, my wife, for whatever reason, does not have any access to my guns. You know, maybe she's not responsible with firearms. I don't know. 
has no access to, to my firearms. I keep them in a safe with different code, right? Okay. So that would be an example, a rare example of no common authority. However, looking back at the no contact order, does he have common authority? Does he have, you know, his own access, his own legal access to those firearms? I think the answer is yes, right, right? I would agree. I mean, it, right? It is, it is what it is. And, you know, it sucks to be in that situation. But, you know, and I think a lot, I don't know, look, I'm not an expert in all these emergency protective orders, but there is some mechanisms for people that have actually ownership interests in these firearms to actually get their firearms into a place where they can actually, like a friend or a family or an FFL, they can hold on to them, whatever. But I think that's a totally different case than the guy with the roommate. And so, yeah, you know, if you're going to, you know, start seizing uh, a whole firearms collection, I would love for the DA and everybody else to know what I'm doing and to be like, hey, I want to be enough up here. This is a big deal. I'm, I'm seizing a lot of firearms versus the one Caltech that's sitting on the, the living room, you know, inside the bedroom and inside her, um, you know, maybe her nightstand, but they both access it, you know. But yeah, different story. Mm -hmm. um, Brian, Brian says that didn't... Uh, Okay, th thanks, Ryan. I appreciate you. Um, Ryan's, I'm sorry, not Ryan. Brian says, didn't the Supreme Court talk about this case in the Rhode Island? The answer is no. You're talking about Conigla versus Strom. That was not a case involving this. That was a case, it wasn't a case uh, uh, um, invalidating protective orders. In fact, it might have done the opposite. It actually was encouraging court approval before uh, going and grabbing Plummy's firearm. So in the Rhode Island case, what happened is that Edward Coniglia took a, a ride to go get checked out mentally. And while he was gone, the, the, the cops went into his house, arguably, allegedly, went to his with no consent or whatever, and grabbed his firearm for safekeeping. There was no judicial order on that. There was no you know, emergency protective order. They just did it to make sure, to help try to help everybody stay safe. So that is prohibited. And we know that that's not what's going on here. Okay. Um, anything to add, Manny? No, I have nothing to say. <laughs> These are good um, questions. I'm trying to like rack my head around no, some no, of no. these questions. No, no, no. Brian, 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 Brian. So he, Brian's saying if we have an EPO or a RPO, can we go get the guns? I did not say that at all. I said if the if the order says you cannot have access to firearms, right? If the order says that, then – then, then the next question is, is how are you lawfully getting those firearms? This, I, I, I have not dived into the whole search and seizure issues. You cannot kick somebody's door in to go grab their firearms. You cannot, um, you, you know, whatever. You, you, you have to have lawful access. And, that, and by the way, that's a whole different question. I'm just saying, can they be seized? You know, right. Well, I'm glad you said that because that would, that would conflict with, with, with case law. That, that EPO is not a search warrant. It's just an it's a it's a it's a uh, it's a contempt thing. If you do if you do not do what I'm telling you, you are in contempt, right? If you don't give up your firearms and you know whatever it is, right? Anyway, okay. Um, let's answer some questions. Unless somebody else has another question, uh, Manny, real quick. The first question I have for you. This is from a, a citizen who sometimes they watch my videos and they get on YouTube and they they email me. I, if they're being respectful, I'm being respectful. You agree, Manny? We're all here to yeah, try. Everybody's agree. trying to learn, right? Yeah, yeah, I think absolutely. everybody should know the law of the land. Yeah, absolutely. And I think we should. They want us to know the law too. So what he's saying, though, he's saying, "Hey, look, this." He says he has expired insurance, and so the cop is following him for a while, and so you know whatever it is, and then he um, he waits for the canine units to uh, to to arrive <laughs> to get behind him, and then he lights up the guy with the cherries and the berries to go do a no insurance stop. And then while they're, um, you know, while he's doing the insurance violation, who who runs the dog, right? And then the, the handler and then the dog alerts. Are we good? Uh, based on those facts right there, I'm going to say we're good. We literally just talked about this uh, last week in the traffic stops and canines. It's uh, within the time frame of the stop. So the, re the reason for the stop was no insurance. And I'm sure you probably saw that in his CAD. Uh, and, yep. and et cetera. So the, uh, him having actually, that's actually a good idea. Having the canine come before the uh, lawful stop was conducted, you know, at th that time, that guy was still free to drive around, still do what as he pleases. The, po the police yeah. just merely just follow him like any citizen would um, running the canine around the car while he does the citations for no insurance. I uh, um, does not extend the stop because it's within the, uh, the, the, the scope of the stop, the reasonableness right. of the stop, 
Right. So um, I think he's good to go on that one. Yep. Okay. What well, change the fact, change the answer. What if he pulled the guy over, no canine, he pulled the guy over, and he also put this in here too. What if he waited three to four minutes to even get out of his car? Now, that's a weird – that'd be like – I'd be like, if I was in my car and there's this cop behind me, you know, with the cherries and the berries and I'm getting out of the car, I would think the cop fell asleep, quite frankly, you know? But I might be knocking on his window, like, can we get this over with? I mean, I got places to go. But let, so look, just let's answer the question. What if the cop took a very long time to get out of his car, okay? Maybe three to four minutes is an exaggeration. But um, what if uh, then the, the canine pulls up? And we learn later that while he was behind the car, the car was stopped, right, Manny? The car was the, – the stop was effectuated. He was doing – he was calling the canine to see if he can get out there to do a free air snip. Would you see a problem in that? Uh, yes, because he is not fulfilling the mission of just the traffic stop at that point. He waited the three to five minutes, and uh, what you're saying here, for pretty much he's trying to delay the, the encounter. And maybe my thought process mm -hmm. on that would be the cop is like, oh, maybe if I delay my first encounter with him, that would be still within the limits of the traffic stop. Um, but obviously, you we. we we obviously can't do that because you're we're unreasonably extending a stop now the citizens like dude what's going yeah. on it's been three to five minutes and then the officer comes to the window to start you know his encounter with the, the traffic stop um i think i yeah. think calling a canine and let's say some evidence yeah. is found i think that's all going to be suppressed all right yep you're right um so that's you, you answered it all all right next question this cop this is a cop from uh missouri okay so he says, uh, basically, let me just kind of tell you what happened here. So the officer responsible call for service, and it's uh, it's a neighbor, and he has on his camera his neighbor stealing one of his packages, right, um, off his porch. So then he goes to the suspect, right, and he tells the suspect, hey, look, I know you stole that guy's package, right? I saw it on the camera. And this is what we're going to do. You have a choice. Either A, you can give that package back. I'm, I'm sorry, back up. He's a, but this is what we're going to do. No matter what, you are going to jail. That's what he says to the guy. No matter what, you're going to jail. You're not going to get out of that, okay? You, you stole the guy's package. I have the evidence. Dead the rights. You're going to go to jail today. But I also want to give you a choice. If you return that guy's package, then you will get out on your own recognizance. I guess this cop um, has his, has has uh, input on this, okay? Okay, I'll just let's assume that the cop can somehow control this issue. I don't know. In my state, we couldn't do that, but no, the, the, the jail decides, not us. But let's just say for argument's sake, this is a truthful statement. If you give the guy back his package, you will go to jail, but then you'll be released, right, on your, your OR. If you don't give the guy his package back, you're still going to go to jail, but you're going to have to uh, have to have a bond, okay? I'm not going to let, let you out on your own recognizance. Now, the guy was not restricted. He was not handcuffed. This is just a conversation that they're having on the porch. Let's presume, before you answer the question, that everything he said is true, okay? Meaning he will be released as an OR if he gives, returns the package and a bond if he doesn't. Was that co – and let's say he returns the package or whatever he does. Was that coercive, yes or no? Was that lawful, I guess, yes or no? You know, it's funny because that's the first thing I thought of. I'm like, but at first I thought you meant like the neighbor went to the, the, um, the suspect. But now that right, it's, it's the cop. I'm oh, sorry, it's went. the cop. It's it's the cop. Yeah. Um, at first I thought it was coercive, but I would say yes. I mean, it's lawful because he's just merely having a conversation. Like, hey, you, you're gonna get charged anyway. Like. This is just the outcome that's going to happen because I, my, it's kind of similar to like when you ask somebody for consent and they deny it, but you have reasonable suspicion. You're like, all right, well, now I'm going to call a canine. That's not coercive. So in this Correct. case, it's and, they like, hey, and they can change your mind, right? They can change your mind. It, exactly, they can change your mind. In this case is like, hey, you're going to jail, but if you give me the package back and the guy's property back, you probably get released. But hey, yeah. if you don't, you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna be held on a bond, like bond or whatever. Um, yep. I don't think that's coercive at all. You're just letting the guy know, like, hey, and he and the cop knows that's literally what's going to happen. I, we can't do yep. that, in Maryland. Maryland, it's the commissioner that's going to uh, do that. But right. as long as the, yep. and that's like really what's going to happen. I don't think it's coercive at all. You're just literally telling the suspect, hey, this is what's going to happen. 
And I think um, they should know yeah. what's going to happen. Um, Amanda, you think it's unlawful if if what they if what he said was true for unlawful or lawful? Was that a misspelling? Because you said you can tell lawful legal justifications, just not make threats or coercions. I think it's unlawful. You, th- you want to get on the mic here? Can, can, Mike, can you get on the mic or no? All right, let's get Amanda on here. You there? Mm. You want to call in, I'm, I'm- Amanda? She, she's not. She's not on yet. You want. You want. You want. You want the phone number to call in. It's probably not. I don't know. What, yeah. Here you go. Well, you. Okay. Go ahead. Hold on. Hold on. Let me, let me turn off. Mute. Oh, you were on mute? Hold on, me. Do you want to do you want to try to call back? Hold on. I'm All trying right. to find my mute button. Okay. All right. Um, I think it's how are you guys doing? Good. It's good to hear from you. What well, you, you you need to do this show, by the way. I mean you want you want to do the search and seizure show? I have a uh another law or another training agency shirt on i got a long time ago today mm. so <laughs> no no no. i'm just saying like in the future sure why not all right <laughs> so what do you, why do you think this is coercive i guess it's the way like no he, he's not searching i mean he's just saying just return the package in fact i don't I think if he doesn't return the package, he just goes to jail. We figure that the package the other way, you know. Well, that could be that could be true too. I don't know. I'm like, oh, you can't hear. Her? Man, hold on. Go go ahead. Sorry. Is that better? Hold on. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just trying to I'm trying to manipulate this, but I got it right. Here. All right. So, Amanda, so, look, he's just telling the guy the truth, right? He's basically saying that, you know, your cooperation is going to go a long way, you know? And let's say he has some kind of influence over this OR versus bond thing. Let's just say that's true. If that's a lie, then we have a problem, right? You're not supposed to be lying to people when, you know, when, you, when you're not supposed to be telling people untruths. But if he's if he's truthful and he's like, yeah, that's what's going to happen. You're going to go on your OR because, you know, whatever. Why can't he tell the truth? I, I guess I see it now. Now that you're yeah, talking I mean, it through, ha, I see you, it now. Ha, ha, can you hear him? Can you hear her? Yeah, I can hear her now. Hey, Amanda, just like this. Uh, how many times have cops told people, "Hey, if you cooperate, I will put that in the police report, and the prosecutor will see it." And you know, prosecutors look at stuff like that. Have they? Have you heard of cops doing that? Yes, I, I've done that. <laughs> of course, is that's not coercive. Yeah. And I got to tell you, I got to tell you, like, I actually think that what the cop did, I mean, he could probably be a little softer about it, right? Um, like, hey, look, you know, if you give the package back, I'll put that in a report. You know, it could re- it could result in, you know, faster release if true. You know, I think he did a little harsh, but I got to tell you, I think it's good police work. I mean, I, I know some I know some prosecutors out there, some will not like it because it, it comes off a little harsh, you know. Um, but I think he actually did good police work by trying to get that guy's package back without a lot of fuss, you know a search warrant, something, you know, like that or whatever. Maybe you can come back and ask the wife for consent. But, um, yeah, but I just have a question on this whole bond thing. I think Matt is talking about that too. So it's a, uh, it, as long as it's a true statement said in a conversational tone, in a way that you have a choice, it's up to you. I think it's fine. Okay. 
I appreciate it. I was just, uh, I guess, I, I guess I got called up on maybe there was going to be a search that occurred after yeah. the package or no. And, and, and we it, don't, as officers here in Kansas, we don't set bonds and we don't have that discretion. And maybe this cop so, doesn't either. I don't know where he's getting this from. I've never seen that before because we're not. That's a that's a court thing, not a cop thing. But look, I could totally be wrong. I could be totally wrong. He may have that option right in the paperwork. You know, bond required. You know, um. So, the the fun thing is that. Mike Brave is saying that if if he was in custody, we would have a uh, a Miranda issue because he would be incriminating himself by having the package. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. In fact, yeah, actually, agree. Mike, Mike, I got to tell you, I think that he actually there may be an argument that at that point he actually is in custody because he really was told um, you're under you're basically under arrest. You're going to jail no matter what. But I will tell you this: if I was the prosecutor, I wouldn't care. Okay. Um, I, I wouldn't make it a big deal because as long as I do not use that statement against them in my case in chief, then there's no Miranda violation, right? Um, I just wouldn't make it a big deal. Is it is it a Miranda issue? Absolutely. Is it the end of the century? Do I, does he get his case dismissed? Not at all. Does the evidence get suppressed? Not at all. As long as we don't use it in his case in chief. But we can't use it for impeachment. If he's like, I never took that package. Oh, really? Well, you told Manny you did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For explaining that. Yeah. All right. Cool. Bye. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I think it's custodial. <laughs> Mike says I'm not a Soros prosecutor. You're damn right. All right, Christian, <laughs> you, you gotta you gotta. Yeah, maybe Patrick knows something too. All right. Uh, who's up on deck? I'm sorry. Is it hey Boone? Boone is here. Let's get Mike on. Mike, you want to come on? Mike, you got a uh, camera or no? Okay, let's do it. Oh shit, you're 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 in some uh you're 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 honored right now, Manny. You're with Mike Boone and Anthony Bandiero, you know what I'm saying? Why don't you no, put on no, a nice just... shirt? You I know what I mean? I got you. I got you. <laughs> okay. I put I put my uniform on. You want me to put my uniform on? Oh, snap. Yeah, yeah. Now you'd be representing the military and really get us in trouble. Yeah, here. I don't want to do that. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, Christian Lopez. Okay, I'm sorry. Going for you right now. Hold on. I was trying to look for you, but I didn't see you. Hold on one second. Christian, there you are. There you are. Hello. There we go. Hey, Mike. Hey. Hey, hey. hey Christian. Yeah. Can you hear me? Let me turn down the yeah, radio. A lot of, yeah, a lot of background. All right, I'm in here again. All right, <laughs> what what you got, my friend? So this one actually happened last week. Um, I stopped a vehicle for speeding. Um, smelled marijuana coming from inside the vehicle. Conducted a PC search. Um, occupied three times. Juveniles, old one is probably twenty one. Young is probably nineteen. Okay. So, anyways, upon searching the vehicle, I, I located about maybe I say thirty to forty thousand dollars worth of cash um, inside okay. the vehicle. So uh, whenever I interviewed the all three suspects, you know, they all said the same thing. I was like, okay, look, be honest with me. Um, where'd you get the money from? They both, all three of them, admitted to uh, to obtaining it through gambling, which here in Texas, gambling is illegal. Um, it's rolling dice specifically. I mean, you know, um, and I, I, I was just like, all right, come on, you're not getting, you're not getting that much money just from gambling. I, I suspected something else was going on. Um, but anyways, so I'm kind of ashamed of this, but, um, I will say again, I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm not going to act on stuff, anything that I'm not comfortable with or familiar with. Um, but I didn't, I didn't seize the money. And so again, um, in my opinion at the time, at the time that, you know, um, that the stop was conducted, I didn't seize the money just because of the fact that again, I didn't know if I had, um, if I, legally I was able to do it. Um, or if I had enough probable cause to seize that money. Um, basically, I talked to a lot of officers. They said that <clears throat> that you could have seized the money. And, you know, at the end of the day, I'm not, again, I'm not going to discredit veteran officers, but under what case law or what, for what reason or what legal reason would I have been able to seize that money? All right. Uh Mike or Manny, Mike, Mike, you're 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 here. What's your instant? What's your intuition here? What do you, what do you think? Well, well you, you touched on it. is it PC that it's evidence? I think is my first thought in there. And or pro, so, or, or proceeds of a crime. 
the proceeds of uh, some other thing there's but you know you're saying maybe you didn't have that as far as there sound like they no one no one abandoned it right they all claimed it as their own proceeds so that's not an option but uh so when you're talking about the gambling so meaning just like friends playing kind of stuff there's no like gambling places in texas anymore. no they they admittedly they said they rolled dice um so that's just kind of how the proceeds came from is they rolled dice which is illegal here in texas yeah look but it, 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 it's yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. It's proceeds. I mean, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah so I would agree. If you're articulating that it's evidence of a crime, then seize it, you know? <laughs> yeah, you could seize it. Look, I, I look, I don't want to get involved in the morality of this. And this, I, you know, I, I have my like, I have cops out there uh, trying to toss cars because underage people have tobacco. Okay. <laughs> um, could they do it? I, I guess, man. I, I, would I do it? Not in a million years. I would never search an adult man's car. Manny is a mil member of the military. If he was <laughs> a 19-year-old kid with a vape in his car, I would never, never search his car for evidence of that crime. Because uh, it's, I don't think that's, uh, but 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 I have my own discretion. You have your own discretion too. So if, if it's a discretion issue, I mean, that's one thing, but uh, could you do it? Yeah, you could. It's proceeds of a crime. Submit it to the prosecutor. If they want to do forfeiture proceedings, that's on them. If they don't, they can give the money back. Yeah, with interest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was just the only thing I was gonna, I was gonna bring up. Um, well, he said that he stopped the car for speeding, smelled marijuana. I know, I don't, uh, Texas. Yeah, well, um, you guys I guess used that's to be like that. Used uh, to be yeah, like, we used to be. That's like a long that. go. Um, that's a long go. Yep. Uh, I mean, but they're juveniles here, so. Oh, that's true. That's true. Um, they're they're twenty uh, under twenty one, so that would be another issue. But that's right. So. Uh, he had probable cause to search the car because of the odor of uh, marijuana. And then he finds the 40K in the car. He interviews them, hopefully separately. Um, I would say that it's good to go as far as seizing the money uh, as proceeds of – they're saying he's uh, gambling. He's saying mm -hmm. it's illegal to gamble in Texas. They're, illegal, yeah. I'm sorry, illegal to, mm -hmm. to gamble in Texas. In my opinion, they're, like, giving, like, little, little truths. So it's like – we got the money from gambling, but which is still illegal. So maybe like to lower, maybe they are, we don't know what they actually got the money from. I see. Right. You, you, might, you, know you, you might be, have, yeah, I see. Maybe you know drugs. With this, so, right. Yeah. But we don't know that yet. Right. We just know like, yeah. Hey, they got 40,000. And, and I do know in the United States, if you have over $10,000 in your car, you're supposed to have, Oh, he's saying yeah, no. I know where you're, no, that's an so, urban legend. So that's that, only, inter yeah, that's uh, only international. That's an, an International, so international. So multiple was, officers like, telling me that. Yeah, yeah. So multiple officers telling me. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was just saying, if you deposit over what ten grand at the time, that generates that was those SAR reports, like. Suspicious. Yeah, but that's that's a bank thing. That's not even our thing. But you can you can yeah. like, if I went. Through, I'm just saying. I I I didn't mean to cut you off, Manny. But it's an urban legend that you can't have over ten G's without an excuse or something like that. I mean, if you went to Las Vegas and you were going to be a top guy and you brought in a hundred thousand dollars, which Mike knows firsthand, a lot of people have that kind of cash. You have no obligation to declare it. You can. It might be suspicious, but you know. Uh, but you can have a hundred thousand dollars in your pocket going through the Las Vegas airport without any issues, as long as you're not going overseas. Okay, look, I think we beat that one to death. Uh, Christian, it is what it is. Uh, you have discretion, obviously, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, you could seize that money as proceeds of a crime. Cool? Gotcha. There's probably no less than okay. 20 grand in your pocket right now, Anthony, right? <laughs> I'm a married man, so the answer is I got, luckily I got 20 bucks, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, I have to i have to hide all my money you know <laughs> um all right so this one's for you manny ready all right ready all right so this this cop is in arkansas right um it doesn't matter it's a it's a, it's a search and seizure question so i was dispatched to a domestic disturbance that started out as a verbal only wife screaming at husband um, while in route, the husband, not the 9 one card, later called saying that his wife is now fighting him, kicking him, pulling his hair, right? Dispatch relayed this, and the cop could hear the husband in the, you know, because I guess they relay the calls. I, I'm just, that's out of my, I, they, we didn't do that in my day, but they can like, you can actually hear the actual domestic uh, call, and you can hear the husband saying, please hurry. He's, I'm going to, she's going to kill me. <laughs> so there was also a history of domestic disturbances at the residence. Now, when we arrived at the front door within a few minutes, heard absolutely nothing. No shouting, yells for help. 
right? Um, let's say that they are home though. What can we do? What if they don't answer the door? Can we kick the door in? Uh, based on the, the call history, the dispatcher relaying the message, and I guess in their, in that particular agency, they can actually hear the 911 call and they can hear like the fighting going on. And the dispatcher is like, yep, they're actually fighting. I can hear them. Wife, yep. the husband's saying this. Um, I would say we, if we're good to go making force entry under the emergency aid doctrine. Ah, not community caretaking. What do you think, Mike? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> but how many times is it going to take you to kick the door? One, right? It's only one time. <laughs> Those are the oh, rules. Yeah, like in the movies. Like in the movies? Yeah, one time. You get hit one time. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever have you ever uh, kicked the door, Mike, that you just could not kick it in? Well, come on. Now we're like on national TV right here. You're going to throw me out like that. <laughs> <laughs> I, was usually, I was usually the Ram guy on our search warrant. So, yeah. Oh, I, but you, I, had a, you had a Ram. You had a, you actually had a Ram. Warrant, but yeah, I kicked a few doors that pushed back on me a few times. Not going to lie. <laughs> I, yeah. Yeah, anyway. Okay. Um, okay. This is, let's talk about, uh, shoot the hinges. Yeah. Just, that's what I want you to do, Manny. Uh, tell your agency that we, we, we taught you to take out your shotgun and just shoot the hinges off. <laughs> okay. So, um, this question is from California. So I work in Northern California. We get dispatched to a, perform a civil standby for a male who wants to get stuff from the house. The male is restrained from, from the residence due to an active SERP EPO. So an emergency protective order, you know, that, that residence is listed. The EPO has no clause saying that law enforcement can do a civil standby, but it does have normal clauses such as stay 100 yards away, no contact, third party, no third party contact, you know, going through the friends. Normally, uh, these... Okay, normally civil standbys can be done with uh, with Ellie present. Can we do a civil standby for this guy? Uh, Mike, why don't you take this one first? Uh, I mean, the guy's trying to do right. You know, it was kind of my first thing. Like, you know, he knows he shouldn't be there. He's trying to abide by the the, the protective order. But, you know, maybe he's got some stuff. I, I don't want him to get him a jackpot violating it. Uh, I'd reach out mm -hmm. to whoever against say hey you know this guy's trying to do right he's not trying to mess you with the protective orders you want to get stuff in the jackpot here he's reached out to us you know can you get this stuff can you get it for him bring it out to us i don't know maybe there's a there's a there's a better way we can work this thing out that's kind of my first thought on the front end mm -hmm. what about uh you manny can we uh, help this guy out get his stuff back or should we stay you know tell him he can't do it no i would agree with mike um uh, we do that all the time uh just like a pretty just stand by while he goes and grabs his stuff a reasonable amount of time. I mean, I'm not going to have him move like furniture out and stuff. It's just like personal hygiene, a couple of clothes and stuff like that. And I think he's doing right. Like, Hey, calling the police. Like, Hey, I just, I need to grab my stuff from this residence. I'm prohibited from going to because of this protective order. Um, can you guys stand by while I go in and grab it? And I think he's doing the right thing to try to grab his stuff. Other than that, I don't right. really know the other way unless the judge like rescinds the order. And but now we do recognize that in that order it does not say anything about grabbing clothes, right? It's pretty clear um, that it says that he has to stay away. Does that affect your analysis at all, or? Uh, yeah, I mean, no, no, the most protective orders are they never have that clause in it. Like they can go and grab their stuff. They don't. They don't have. But I think it's about, more of hey, like, uh, yeah. But I think it's more of like a moral thing. Like I, I would agree with Mike too. Like call the. The petitioner be like, hey, the respondent wants to grab some stuff. Is it okay? We just do a, a standby. No one's gonna fight. No one's gonna do anything. Like maybe you want to step outside while we, and we'll you know go inside and watch him follow, mm -hmm. like grab his stuff right. and and stuff. I, I don't. I right. think well, he's I'm doing glad fine. you guys. I, I'm glad you guys are here. This ain't gonna work. So, <laughs> the case. It, this is a Washington case, so it's out of the Ninth Circuit, but uh, Osborne versus Seymour, 2011. Um, Restraining orders issued against homeowner and her estranged husband did not sanction civil standby and thus did not justify police officers warrantless entry into the, the residence for the purpose of qualified immunity. Orders did not contain statutory language authorizing husband to retrieve his possessions from the residence or authorizing any law enforcement officer to accompany him to assist him in doing so. A homeowner's restraining order against the husband expressly prohibited him from entering the residence and provided that such prohibition could only be changed by court order upon written application. 
no or, no order was made and it said police officers otherwise unlawful entry into the residence was not justified for a purpose of qualified immunity well they said they does, just Huh? That's what I was thinking. Did they just go yeah, in without talking to like you know? Because you know, I was trying to work a consent angle, but, but it, yeah, no, it would no, but it wouldn't matter. You you, matter. you can't you can't, no because the cops are violating the they're violating they're helping order. him. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 accomplices here. They cannot help him violate that order, and that's the problem here. It's 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 you know it, it is what it is. It the, and it, it says right here because the cop was like, well, I didn't really read it all, and this and that. It said the officer's failure to read protection order did not excuse his ignorance. <laughs> mm. uh, so if of, you a bunch of that was in that was in that was in Washington. Look, look, you can maybe it is okay. state specific. I'm just saying Washington, you know, it's pretty because the, the cop was in what? Um, California. Yeah. Was it California? The one I just read? Yes. Northern California. And that's. Yeah, so look, I just I look at it from you know the nice maybe it's like the, the if I look in there maybe some nice circuit case law, but look, I, I think at the end of the day, why are we, why would we help this guy violate the TPO, right, Mike? I mean, that's not the question. That's not. I mean, I that's the, yeah, I agree with you, Anthony. That's the, the question. We're not we're violating the TPO. I get that, but I think we're trying to be reasonable people in here a little bit, and you know, with but you can't be spying. reasonable. But TPOs aren't reasonable. You know, I mean, how many times yeah. have, dude, I mean, how many times have these people text messages, their love, you know, their ex-wife or their wife, whatever. Hey, right. why are you doing this to me? And then they get arrested for violating a TPO. That's not reasonable, you know, but yet That's they it. get, you know, I don't know. I just, I, yeah. I just think that, I just think that we, we, you know, I think we should be very cautious on this and help by helping people commit contempt, you know? <laughs> it, 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 yes, it is reasonable, but I think that person, the adverse, adverse party, they're going to have to unfortunately they're going to have to be like that. But part of the plaintiffs, they're going to have to go to the judge and say, "But your honor, I got I, where's my clothes at? I, I'm living out of a, a of a backpack." And then they're going to have the judge and have to authorize a one a one a one time visit with police uh, presence. It didn't say that the cop could do it, so I think that um, you know I don't you know look you can look at the Seymour case and see exactly what happened, but I would I would not do that. I would not, I would have nothing to do with that. That's you, you get the out, judge's permission. Yeah. You reach out to the, uh, the petitioner and say, Hey, you know, could you bring his, bring his stuff out to him? And you know, kind of like, you know, maybe you can work around it. You know, Hey, well, he's not coming in. Oh coming yeah. 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 That's the, yes, yes, yes. I think, so, okay. Like, I like that. that. That initial spiel I was saying that you reach out to them and say, he's trying to, he's trying not to violate this. He's very, he's clear that, you know, I'm staying away hundred yards. I'm not doing all this stuff here, but I really love my toothbrush. <laughs> you know, so. Absolutely. I, <laughs> Hey, right. Mike, I think that's a great idea that you could use your de-escalation skills to be like, hey, wife, you know, he's not anywhere near it, right? He's at the the Walmart, whatever, you know, waiting he's, for the outcome. I am hey, not getting myself put in jail for this. <laughs> that's right. Hey, look, he he's asking for X, Y, and Z. Could you give him, you know, X, Y, and Z so he can, you know, do, and then if the wife wants to give up the property, but if she says no, then like, hey, okay, that's fine. Um, You know, that's what he gets for marrying you, you know, and you, that's what you get for marrying him. Right, you guys yeah. don't get along. He cannot have his toothbrush. And, uh, you know, maybe you guys are better off apart. So maybe he should go straight to a divorce attorney. <laughs> well, look, he's, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying I feel sorry for these guys because sometimes they are true um, abusers. But at the same time, we have all seen abuses of the system. You know what I mean? And temporary protective orders are actually used as as almost like, uh, not blackmail, but what's the word? Like, you know, just they're abuse, like torture almost. But that's not the right <laughs> word either. Um, I have a question. What you got? Is that? case you just read is that washington state specific or is, yes. is that a ninth circuit it's it's so it's not ninth circuit it's not a it's ninth circuit court of appeals it's out of the state of washington um okay. which you know obviously it's part of ninth circuit so i would it's not it's only persuasive it's only persuasive um you know who and i didn't take i just had it on my my ipad just because i keep that kind of stuff so i have no idea if there's actually a binding case um in california but i can just tell you um that I would, as, a, as, a, as an attorney, I would never recommend a cop straight up help somebody violate a protective order, period. Even though their heart is in the right place, their brain isn't. It says what it says, stay out, keep away, do not facilitate their violation. That's that's my, that's how I look at it, you know? And they don't like it, go to the judge. And Patrick from New Jersey says the same thing. Like, they, you know, they have to go, they're telling their people, go get the judge's permission to do this, uh, one free visit to get your clothes out. Yeah, I agree. Yeah.
Uh, yeah, and then, you know, what properties agreed on. Okay, so that's what we got. I'll take one last question, right? One last question for the experts here um, and our, our guest here. Manny, I'm really freaking glad you came on. Teresa, um, more social media. Does anybody have one last question before we move on? I have a question. Yeah, what you got? So for a while, our jail, like we'll get warrants, sometimes out of county or out of state warrants, obviously. And some of those warrants can't, let's just stay with the, the out of county warrants. So sometimes we'll get an out of county warrant. And on the warrant, it says it cannot be served in the county of arrest, but use the warrant as a detainer. Mm. For a while, our our jail, our detention center was refusing um, to take the the person in custody in because they're they're I guess it was a misconception misunderstanding but there's their theory was oh it can't be served in our county you have to take them to that county I mean it's not reasonable for me to drive three and a half hours to another county yeah. and stuff like that and we argue like well the warrant it says it could be used as a detainer meaning like it, he's just being detained here until the agency could get, come pick him up my question is the jail doesn't do that anymore because we solved that. Yeah. Um, my question is if if that was the case and the jail is refusing to take this person into the jail to process them and book them, and they have a warrant and the warrant needs to be served, but it's only a detainer, is the jail um violating his due process rights to, you know, like be processed into the jail, see a court commissioner and just get the process over with? No. No, nobody okay. has a due process right to be arrested. Right. I mean, where's the people have a due process. If you're if arrested, you you know, you have to have rights, but there is no due process rights to be arrested. Now, there, you know, there are some due process rights to be notified about pending criminal trials. Actually, uh, yeah. Mike worked on a big Sixth Amendment project uh, that happened in his uh, jurisdiction where, you know, there was this issue where people were not being notified of legal proceedings against them. Right. And then they would have these charges like these warrants hanging over their head for years and they were never notified about it. And that is a due process violation because they, they don't have. To, now you're losing witnesses. The evidence is disappearing of their innocence. Right. In, they could have they could be innocent. Their alibis are now gone. Uh, that's that, that 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 comes up to mind. Right. But you have no due process right to be arrested uh, and be charged with a crime. Mike, anything else on that? No, that sounds good. Yeah. So the jail fact, can deny them. Yeah, they did. People get denied all the time. Do it, you know. Absolutely, they get denied for. I mean, for charge, they get. You know, we're not taking this guy. We're full. Uh, yeah, there's no due process violation. There's no. There's no constitutional right to be arrested, right? No, I mean, no. I mean, you might be. You might be violating. Look, Manny, you might be violating the judge's order. I'll tell you. I'll tell you one thing. And um, and just as since we're having this conversation, right? Um, in my agency in in, in Nevada. Um, the interpretation was that if we stopped somebody for with a warrant, and we we did not care what the warrant was for, it could be for spitting on a sidewalk or murder, they had to be taken to jail. My agency viewed that as a command by the judge because it said, you know, you shall forthwith take this person before a magistrate, right? Mike's agency did not see it that way, right? They 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 used to do a, what's called a field interview, right? A, a interview, what was it called? Like uh Something in release, field interview and release. What do you guys call that? Interview and release. I guess something, something like that. Something. Whatever. The point is, his agency uh, did not mandatory arrest misdemeanors. Uh, they'll just do a, a field interview. Hey, you got just so you know, I pulled over for speeding, right? I ran you. You have a ticket for uh, for a parking violation. I'm just making this shit up. You have a parking violation, a warrant for your arrest for whatever. Okay, and the fine is like five hundred dollars, whatever. Go take that. Go go get uh, get that taken care of because if you if you get stopped again, you can end up going to jail. They did not mandatory arrest these people. And I guess the point here is who was right? Um, probably no, you know, either one, either interpretation. I mean, what's going to happen to the cop that doesn't make the arrest for the warrant? Absolutely nothing. If there's a DA out there that wants to somehow charge that cop with dereliction of duty and not make an, an contempt of cop, if there's a judge out there, this, this could theoretically happen. If there was a judge out there and says, "Hey, you said what it, it said, what it said, mandatory arrest, you shall forthwith, right? You're now contempt of uh, court." I guess that could, in a very extreme case, happen, but nobody's worried about it. So again, there's just no right to be arrested, generally speaking, not not from the the defendant's perspective. All right, anything else? 
All right. Well, guys, um, thank you so much, uh, one Mike. Thing, one thing, yeah, quick. please. Absolutely. Say, thanks. Uh, thanks to uh, Westminster, California. I was out there the last couple of days, advanced search and seizure, advanced traffic stops, uh, real great class. I mean, we had people from that were Newport Beach, LAPD, Orange mm -hmm. County. I mean, it was just a, everybody there. It was a blast. So just uh, thanks to you all, you great hosts. So thanks. Yeah. And uh, and again, I want to thank uh, Texas DPS. I'm in uh, Houston right now, outside of Houston, you know, doing my thing. And uh, Manny is just doing whatever he's doing in a hotel room in Pittsburgh. Uh, <laughs> what's your what's your MOS? Uh, 31 Bravo, which is military police. Oh, nice. Nice. So a little bit of uh, compatible with your your daytime, your day job. Eh, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> well, sometimes in, in a very loose sense, I guess. Hey, right. uh, I want to thank you again, Manny. You know, you you add a lot of life to this to, to this webinar. You've always been a great sport with your questions and so forth. And it's, it really does thank us, uh, really help us because, you know, Mike and I are looking to answer questions and we need questions to answer. So I appreciate you guys. You can see all the love, right? Um, thank you guys. And Manny, hopefully we'll see you next week. All right, guys. Thank you. All right. Thank Fair you much. so much for having me.